Hello everyone, I am 8mm Mauserman. Thank you so much for watching this video today. And I'm going to be doing part three of a four part series on modernizing my M16A1. Now I used to have a red dot on this, that's what the last video in this series was about. However, I decided to take that red dot off. Now I had filmed this video once before with the red dot still on, but that save file was corrupted, so now I'm doing it again with the red dot off. What we're talking about today though is lights. Now, just as a brief recap, we had said that the four things that a modern rifle needs is a good sling, a good optic, a good flashlight, and then decent magazines, as in magazines that aren't going to cause malfunctions. Now, we were trying to do this with four priorities in mind. The first one was keeping the rifle all-purpose. ARs like this one are designed to be all-purpose rifles, so we don't want to do something that takes away that capability, such as putting an absolutely massive scope on it, or in the case of that red dot, it just made it really heavy and kind of awkward and unwieldy, so I decided to take it off, and maybe someday I'll replace it with some sort of optic, but I'm just going to go with irons for now because I like M16A1 irons. The second thing is it has to increase functionality, so it's going to be something that actually gives you more capability. You're not just going to attach something because it looks cool. So, flashlight is a good example of that. Third, it needs to value both retro faithfulness and cost. So what I mean by that is that I'm not going to replace the upper with a pick rail upper. I'm going to keep a fixed carry handle upper because that is faithful to the time, but I'm also not going to put something on it that is prohibitively expensive for me. So as much as I would love to use an X300, um, those are like $300 flashlights, so instead I'm sticking to a streamlight. Fourth and finally, I'm not willing to make permanent modifications to this rifle. Now that's a little bit easier with an M16 than some others because there's so many parts that you can replace and change out, but in general I'm going to try and keep this rifle in M16A1 configuration. Now with mounting flashlights we have a few different options. The first would be to replace the handguards with either a quad rail or to do something like Magpul handguards. Now I'm against the idea of Magpul handguards because they are a newer thing, they're not really faithful to the retro aesthetic. And the quad rail, although very cool, they can be expensive and heavy. However, they are two really good options. Now, if you have an M16A2, or you're doing something like a CAR 15A2 build, or something like that, that has the A2 handguards, one of the things you can buy is these clamp-on Picatinny rails that mount to the bottom of A2 handguards. However, they would not work with A1 handguards. If you wanted to go that route, you could. It's just not possible with this rifle. The other advantage there is those are pretty cheap. Now, getting into the options that I considered, uh, I was looking at barrel clamps or front sight block clamps. Now, there are two different kinds of front sight block clamps that I've seen. I'm sure there are others as well. One of them clamps around the whole thing and then mounts the flashlight down on the bottom. One of the things that I personally was trying to retain with this rifle was the ability to mount a bayonet to the bottom. So that option was out for me. However, another option for gas block mounts that I considered and actually used for a little while was a little Picatinny mount like this. I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of it for a few reasons. The first one is that it was pretty bulky and it put the flashlight directly out on the side. This meant that the rifle was a little bit less in line, meaning it was more likely to catch on things, but for practical things that I was experiencing, it was harder to fit in a case. Another issue is that this is just a newer gadget, so it didn't seem to really fit on this rifle in particular. So I wasn't a fan of it personally, however I did have good experience with this item. So it was just something I bought off Amazon, it was called something like an AR gas block clamp or something like that. I was satisfied with the construction of it, and I shot it quite a bit and didn't have any issues with it coming loose or anything like that. It was just not something that I thought really fit on this rifle. So if you're looking for something like this, I would say that it does work. Now, what I actually ended up going with was a cheap version of a Weaver barrel clamp mount. So that's what this looks like right here. I've seen these mounted a few different ways. One way that I've seen is around the gas block right here and then going under, but I've also seen them mounted in front of the gas block on the barrel like mine is. Now, there were a few small modifications that I had to make to this mount to make it work. Now, the first thing is, is that the one that I bought was an off-brand, and it's worked for me pretty well so far, but it did have a big label along the top, so I just took a Sharpie and penciled through that a few times, and then now it's dark enough, you can't really see it unless you look really close. Now, the other modification was that this one was either made for, like, a shotgun barrel, or an M16A2 or A4 barrel, which is thicker past the gas block than an M16A1 pencil barrel. 
So I just needed to cut the screws down a little bit in order to make them work with this rifle. And then of course, because there was some bare metal, I just did that same thing, took a Sharpie and went over it so that it didn't stand out clearly. Now, of course, if you get really close, there are better ways to do that, but this worked. So those are the mounting options. And then the one that I actually went with, what about the light itself? Well, I went with a Streamlight ProTac 2LX and I've been pretty happy with it so far, although there are just a couple issues. The first one is that for whatever reason, I couldn't get the tail cap on hand tight enough to where it would work consistently. So I just took some vice grips, put it on there, twisted it a little extra, and now it works. Now I've been able to get it off and tighten it back on without an issue, but I should mention that I did need to do that the first time in order to get it to work properly. However, other than that, with this and every other Streamlight I've used, I've personally had really good experiences. I think Streamlight is the most budget-friendly flashlight that I would count on to work well. Of course, I would like to spend much more money, but I don't have that cash flow. Now, the other thing is, is that this is not meant to be a weapon-mounted flashlight. It's meant to be a handheld flashlight. So because of that, it is just a little bit thinner than most weapon-mounted mounts work for. Now, if I get close, you can see that the clamp is not mounted to the body of the flashlight. It's mounted where the head is right here. There are two main reasons for that. The first is that since the body of the light is thinner, it would not actually mount right here. It would be too loose. But the second is that I didn't want to use a pressure switch and I can get my thumb right there and actuate it from where I would put my hand. This flashlight has a momentary on feature and then if you click it into place, it stays on. You could program it a few different ways like with a strobe option or with low and high. However, I just stuck with mine in high mode only. Now, if you were going to buy mounts off of Amazon from relatively shoddy companies, I recommend that you test it before you would put it on something that you would count on your life for. However, I've had good experience with these ones so far. And actually, I did have this on a 20 gauge shotgun for a little while, and it would come loose under the recoil of that gun. However, it would still stay together. So I could have Loctited it if I was keeping it there. But on this rifle with this little recoil, it's not really something I'm as concerned about. And since it's been on this rifle, I haven't had any issues. Now I am using a white light instead of a yellow light like you would see at this time. That's not really something I'm all that worried about and I just wanted the increased functionality of a bright white light. Could I do better? Maybe, but this is what I went with and on this rifle it looks pretty good. I also like how close I got it to the gas block so it is really easy to use from a shouldered position. So I just have the rifle, I'm pulling it tight into my shoulder like I normally would, click it on, click it off, or do the momentary on. So at least for the time being, this is the configuration that this rifle will be in with the flashlight mounted on the side and no optic, I'll just use the iron sights. I'd like to get more confident with iron sights anyway, so I just moved the red dot to another project. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am 8mm Mauser Man, and I think this M16 might be my favorite rifle that I own. But I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Great job. Great job.